What is up, Ancestral Minions? Colin here for another video. This one's in a different setup. It's in my room. I got my I got my screen recording response set up. We're gonna talk about some insanity on the social medias today. This is a post by Metabolic Mike, a guy that I follow and respect tremendously. People, I'm not going back to the gym until there's a vaccine. Also, people, regularly eats food that decrease vaccine effectiveness, increase conditions contributing to death. And then he has an arrow, obesity and diabetes to go. And he's got what looks like a strawberry smoothie of some kind, a uh, strawberry fresco or something. And then like a bit, that looks like a big pink lemonade. That pink lemonade probably has about 50 to, f- 50, I would say 50 grams of sugar. The smoothie, maybe like 35 to 40. The other thing, maybe in like the 25 to 35 range. Unbelievable that this, these are standard fare for people. I mean, people regularly drink this stuff. Now, what sucks is that if you're watching this video and you follow along on YouTube and you're already, you know, watching my stuff, then like you probably don't drink this crap, you know? And so it's like, are we helping? Like, are we bringing awareness to these things? I don't know because the people that need to see it and hear it are probably not watching this channel or this video right now. It's just as unfortunate reality. And so maybe you, as somebody that is watching this, can get some ideas about how to talk about these things or help people or maybe even share this type of content with other people. You know, the problem is people that love their strawberry lemonade from Starbucks are probably not going to receive a post like this very well. It's going to be an attack on their character. It's going to, it's going to threaten their self-identity. Or maybe they're going to make some excuses about how, well, it's their treat or this and that. And, you know, it's all reasonable and understandable. But this is really, really dangerous stuff in the world we live in because, I mean, we've locked down economies and shut down basically the entire world and infringed on rights and done all kinds of insanity, just insane things in the name of protecting people that, uh, let's get rid of the screensaver, that uh, shouldn't need to be protected because they shouldn't be obese and diabetic in the first place. Now, of course, diabetic, there are certain health issues uh, situations. I don't believe, I don't remember if it's type one or type two where you need insulin. So that's way different than, uh, I believe it's type two diabetes where it's, it's a diet related issue, right? Whereas I think type one is where you need insulin. So that's very, sh- that's very much a medical condition. And while those people should be eating clean food, uh, like clean food is not going to help them without medical intervention. As far as my understanding goes, it could be wrong on that though. So let's read what metabolic Mike had to say. Humans are predictably irrational. Folks regularly consume foods that fast-track the development of diabetes and obesity, yet wear masks and gloves while doing so. I often hear young and seemingly smart people. Now, that's a very important point. Seemingly smart people. Because this is actually something that really got to me during this uh, 2020 lockdown nonsense. I saw a lot of people that I follow that I might respect their opinion, that might be even genius level in certain domains, fall victim to a lot of the logical fallacies that have been promoted by the government, by experts on TV, by the fear-mongering nonsense that has gone on in 2020 and that is still going on even to this day with something that has like a 99.9x% percent survival rate. It's quite literally insanity that so many like seemingly smart or, or smart most of the time or actually just straight smart people still fall victim to this bias. And so here's the one big thing that I want to put out there that you can maybe think about and take away and help maybe promote. The question needs to become not whether masks work or don't, uh, because a lot of research says that they don't, whatever. The question is, what if the entire premise of the thing that we're supposed to be afraid of is flawed? What if the data is not really there? What if the fact that like in Russia, for example, there was like over 40,000 cases of the flu last year, and now this year there's like seven or some absurd number. I saw a a picture of that recently, right? Everything that's going to be the flu this year in 2020 is going to be called the five letter boogie word. You can, you can bet your bank on that for sure. It's already been going on, right? What if the tests were faulty? Well, they are faulty. So it's not even a what if, but yet you still trust the data that comes out of hospitals that you still trust the data that the government is using and manipulating. It's absolutely insane. The government has blatantly said, I think it was a new policy or something, where the numbers around unemployment and other things like that would actually just be hypotheticals and in some cases made up if it fit a certain narrative or had a certain, uh, like they could say, national security, you know, reason to be uh, manipulated, right? So the government said, and the Fed particularly said, okay, well, we're going to tell you what unemployment is, but keep in mind that sometimes it's going to be completely wrong 
or it's going to be wrong or whatever. Or it's going to be distorted this way or that way. Yet people still, I got to turn that off. That's driving me crazy. People still somehow trust what the government tells them. This is what's so mind boggling to me. And it's so easy to ignore this because we forget that the underlying kind of baseline data that we're using, because we have to kind of agree on something if we want to be able to make decisions, we have to kind of take in data and say, okay, well, here's some data, here's some information. Now I got to think about how I think about it. And I got to like build rationale on top of it. But what if that data at the baseline is completely and utterly flawed, backwards, corrupt, whatever, right? Most people cannot, they can't think about that because it causes cognitive dissonance. And so what do they do? They just ignore it and they deem people that want to question it or they call them conspiracy theorists, right? Guess what? All of the mask research that, that shows any connection whatsoever to masks being beneficial have happened post-2020 pandemic. <laughs> the research before that was done in the medical setting and all these different, like they've done actual interventional studies, have been able to show no difference between mass use and not mass use. And they've tested things like cloth masks and, and, and 95 respirators and things like that, right? And now here's the thing. I'm just talking about the research that's published. And people would then come at me and attack me and do whatever, ad hominem, as a way to not have to change their idea around mask wearing because they like the idea of wearing a mask or they think it's this or they think it's that or whatever. I literally had somebody respond to my recent newsletter, which you can actually get over Colin.coach. She, and I was just a passing comment to mask wearing and, and Karen's and whatnot. And she said that my right to freedom does not supersede, I think this is kind of what she said, her right to life. I kid you not. Because apparently me wearing a mask is infringing on her right to life or it is threatening her life. <laughs> it is absolutely asinine that this is going on in 2020. But guess what? What world do we live in? Fragile PC culture, SJWs running rampant, everyone trying to be politically correct regardless of the outcomes, regardless of what it does and side effects, right? People wanting money from the government to save them, wanting more socialism, more this, more that. People wanting to basically infringe on constitutional rights this country is founded on because they can feel a little bit safer, even though, even though, the point is, even though, and this is the point, even though, it is a false sense of security. How about just not buying the 50 grams of sugar drink at Starbucks or eating the fake processed food and seed oils? Then you can go out every single day without a mask on and live free and have no fear. So... Yeah, it's like, again, the people that need to hear this won't watch this video. And if they did, they will just attack me. They'll take one thing I said and they'll try to create an argument or manipulate or do whatever. And then they'll basically focus on that and ignore like the 99% of everything else I just said in this video. And that is the problem with the human mind. We have a desire, a need even. We have a biological need to believe what we believe. The human mind is not designed to change its mind. And that's why the people that do change their mind, they win right? They win in, in, in everything pretty much. They win in making money. They win in having better relationships. They win in being more aware of the stupid mistakes that they used to make because they change and they grow and they evolve. People with the growth mindset that change their mind, that evolve are the people that win in a modern world. In the past 10,000 plus years ago, those that kept a myopic closed worldview were those that most were likely to survive in a small hunter-gatherer setting, right? And you see the evolution of humans is moving towards change, adapt, right? Because we live in a world where information comes at us nonstop and new scientific breakthroughs and things happen all the time. When you can change, adapt, and evolve, you will so. And everyone else will be left behind. And they will basically eat and drink themselves to death. And I don't want that to happen. But I don't see a way out of it. I don't. I don't see a way out of it. I, I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Do you see a way out of this? What can we do to wake people up? I mean, probably a lot of people that are drinking this huge thing full of sugar know it's not good for them, right? But I don't know. Like, is it self-control? Is they don't care? Is this, that? Like, it's, it's tough. It's a tough, all of it is tough. 2020 is tough. For me, it's mostly tough. Not for financial reasons, not for business reasons. It's tough to look at my fellow humans and feel a kind of disdain and disgust. Because even if I felt that way before with a, with a picture like this, even before I would have been upset that this is the norm where people just consume copious amounts of sugar 
Today, it's now that they do that while also not understanding basic science about uh, cloth masks or lockdowns or this or the suicide rate or anything like that. It's, it's seeing the insanity of schools and what they're trying to do to kids and the emotional trauma that's going to cause, you know, long term. It's, it, it's sad. It's really sad.